and step-by-step -step hysteroscopic treatment of FIGO type 3 myoma with the cold loop technique. Submucous myomas constitute approximately 10% of all uterine fibroids and are often associated with symptoms such as infertility, pelvic pain, and abnormal uterine bleeding. In the case of infertility, there is fair evidence that hysteroscopic myomectomy can improve reproductive outcomes. Recently, there has been a growing interest in type 3 myomas due to their potential negative impact on reproductive outcomes in women who wish to become pregnant. Type 3 myomas are characterized by a complete myometrial development while encroaching upon the endometrium. Because of their characteristics, type 3 myomas are diagnosed through a hysteroscopy, employing the minimum intrauterine pressure necessary for visualization. In the 2018 last update of the Lyomyoma subclassification system, the classification of type 3 myomas has changed now categorizing them as submucous fibroids. Nevertheless, there are currently no guidelines available for the management of type 3 myomas, and the optimal surgical approach is yet to be clarified. Considering that preserving as many myometrial fibers as possible is the primary objective in treating myomas. Hysteroscopic treatment could be speculated as the best choice for addressing type 3 myomas. However, there are only a few reports on hysteroscopic treatment for type 3 myomas, all of which utilize the classical slicing technique. The cold loop hysteroscopic myometomy is a safe and effective technique which allows a complete removal of the submucous myomas in a single surgical step by bluntly disconnecting the fiber connective bridges that anchor the myoma to the pseudo capsule, minimizing at the same time the damage to the surrounding healthy myometrium. This technique has been proven to be associated with a low rate of complications and post-surgical intracavitary adhesions. In this video, we demonstrate a step-by-step hysteroscopic treatment of fecal type 3 myoma using the cold loop technique. The cold loop hysteroscopic myomectomy is articulated in three phases. One, open the endometrial myometrial window, sacrificing as little myometrium as possible. Two, find the correct cleavage plane by blunt dissection of the fiber connective bridges, anchoring the myoma to the pseudo capsule using cold loops. 3. Slicing by electrical loop of the detached intramural component of the fibroid displaced into the uterine cavity. No ultrasound guided is needed during the procedure. We present a case involving a 29 millimeter type 3 myoma on the anterior uterine wall, initially diagnosed via ultrasound and subsequently confirmed through an office diagnostic hysteroscopy in a 45 year old infertile patient with repeated oocyte donor IVS failures. The patient was scheduled for an inpatient cold loop hysteroscopic myomectomy. Given the potential negative impact on surgical outcomes and the risk of shrinking effect, no GNRH analog was administered prior to the procedure. The procedure is performed in the operating room under general anesthesia, following a cervical dilation with Hagar dilators up to size 10. A 26 French monopolar retoscope is introduced in the uterine cavity. The inflow pressure distends the uterine cavity, creating the illusion of the absence of a myoma. So, to confirm the presence of a type 3 myoma, it is necessary to reduce the endocavitary pressure and then return it to the normal distension. This procedure should allow for the identification of a bulge in the uterine wall, in this case the anteuterine wall. The procedure begins by creating the endometrial myometrial window with the goal of preserving as much myometrium as possible. Once this window is opened, a clear view of the myoma, the cleavage plane, and a few millimeters of the cut myometrial fibers becomes possible. Next, the electrical cutting loop is replaced by the flat cold loop, which facilitates the accurate and easy identification of the cleavage plane between the myoma and the myometrium.
to effectively bluntly disconnect the fibroconnectable bridges anchoring the myoma to the pseudo capsule, the hooked cold loop is applied by making repeated passages along the surface of the myoma. Freed from the fibroconnectable bridges and under the myometrial contractions, the intramural component of the myoma is now partially dislocated into the uterine cavity, allowing for its removal through classical slicing. Care must be taken to move the electrical loop from the notch of the myoma toward the uterine cavity to avoid dangerous complications such as uterine perforation. In the case of submucous myomas with a prevalent component developed in the myometrium, as for type 2 or type 3 myomas, it may be useful to alternate between blunt dissection using the cold loop and slicing the intramural component that has been displaced into the uterine cavity. At the conclusion of the procedure, the entire myoma has been successfully removed, allowing for a clear visualization of the myoma's notch along with its intact pseudocapsule. The procedure was successfully completed in a single surgical step. The patient was discharged in good health the day following the surgery. At the three-month follow-up, the Diagnostic Office Histoscopy revealed a fully recovered uterine cavity. The optimal surgical and non-surgical approach for managing type 3 myomas in women desiring pregnancy has yet to be clearly defined. Until further evidence is available, patients should be informed of alternative treatment options. The cold loop hysteroscopic treatment allows for the complete removal of type 3 myomas while preserving the myometrium, making it a myometrial sparing option. Unlike other cold enucleation techniques, such as Osario technique, which only permits the complete non-fragmented removal of small type 0, type 1, and type 2 myomas, the cold loop hysteroscopic myomectomy enables to remove type 3 myomas up to 3 centimeters in diameter without requiring ultrasound guidance. The cold loop technique proves to be a safe and effective option for treating type 3 myomas. This approach leverages the anatomical characteristics of the myoma and the pseudocapsule, as well as the contractions of the myometrium. It enables the secure removal of the myoma without damaging to the surrounding healthy myometrium. This aspect is of paramount importance for women planning to conceive.